Hey folks, Armin Hammer here. Let's talk about day one of the 2019 Rogue Invitational. Since the Rogue Invitational was announced, it was clear that Rogue was trying to make a marquee event for the sanctional season. And now that we've seen what the first day of competition looks like, I would say that they've done an exceptionally good job of actually pulling that off. There are quite a few things that Rogue is doing really, really well, from the high quality on the production side of things to the access to classic rogue-ish little toys for the individuals and the teams to play with during the events to the prize purse which is gigantic ginormous really really huge in case you're wondering four hundred thousand dollars between the divisions the real gems here though are a little bit below the surface. I mentioned the stream just a second ago, and from a production standpoint, it's really been one of the highlights. I mean, the, the quality has been really high. It's had little to no downtime at all throughout the day, which is very tough to pull off. And they have uh, live rep counters, which is something that adds on multitudes of man hours and volunteers and extra human beings in order to pull that off, which is very impressive that they were able to, to kind of put that together. And the interesting thing about the stream is that it's kind of sort of like a cousin to the stream that we saw at the Mid-Atlantic CrossFit Challenge, which in itself was a cousin to the streams that have been produced by CrossFit HQ. And by cousin, I mean they share a lot of the same humans behind it. They share some of the same structure behind it. And behind the scenes, you know, if you watched my interview with Greg Glassman, he mentioned sort of this, this feeling about the broadcasting of the games. And it was a vague answer, but the thing that he was very clear about was that he did not want to provide any sort of exclusivity to any broadcasting partner. And that I think is interesting because the team probably that would have been pulling off the, uh, the, the broadcast for the company that was negotiating for the rights of the games was this team, uh, or at least close enough that we can say it was pretty much going to be this team. And so this is kind of the stream that we have been used to with regionals and the games in the past because a lot of it is the similar team members. And it's kind of the stream that we would have had had CrossFit signed an exclusive deal uh, to have the games broadcast you know, kind similar to the way it's been broadcast in the past. Honestly, if you were expecting to see a subpar live stream out of something that Rogue is putting on, you have bad expectations. The fact is, Rogue generally knocks it out of the park when they have opportunities to do this sort of thing. All you have to do is go onto their YouTube and just look at literally any of their media and you'll see sort of the attention to detail and the quality that they are going to be putting on for pretty much every single one of these types of shows. The part of this Rogue Invitational that I am actually most impressed by is the fact that they were able to create and put on what seems to be a very entertaining show. And I know that sounds like a strange thing to say, but again, the context of this is this Rogue Invitational was built from the ground up to be a marquee event when it came to a sanctioned competition. And when you're comparing it to previous top tier events that we saw in the game season, you know, even last year, regionals and the games, they had major issues when it came to the actual watchability of the events. And here's what I mean. Rogue put together a sequence of events for the spectators to sort of experience and watch and be wowed by and it wasn't just CrossFit stuff. Now, the CrossFit stuff was made even better, even more watchable, even more exciting because there aren't meaningless heats. And one thing that we've learned from regionals and the games over the past few years is that honestly, those first couple of heats, especially at regionals, are pretty useless. It, it sucks to say that because those are athletes that have worked really hard to get there, but the fact of the matter is from a spectator's perspective, they are awful. They're really, really boring to watch. They have no outcome on the end result of the actual competition. And we've seen that happen not just at regionals, which would make sense because it was an intermediary step, but also at the games where the first couple of heats for most of these events were kind of just going through the motions, waiting for the athletes to finish for the time cap to happen for the next slash better slash more exciting heats to take place. And CrossFit 
is sort of moving in that direction. They've, they've talked about how the first couple days of the CrossFit Games will be, you know, really aggressive eliminations, hopefully, ideally getting all the way down to just the top 10 for the last day or two of competition so that it's going to be just the most exciting competitive moments over and over again every time they take the floor and rogue has kind of built something like that they have just two heats of individuals and each heat is exciting for various reasons just one heat of teams which means that that's the only heat that you have to worry about and teams are already notoriously impossible to pay attention to so when you just have the one heat and just the handful of teams to watch things become significantly easier both to follow and to be sort of bought into so that when something exciting happens you're actually pumped about it. Outside of that structure which has created a much more exciting CrossFit competitive show, Rogue really excelled when it came to adding in side shows that are both meaningful and exciting for the spectators. And the most obvious example of these exciting sideshows is the Legends competition, a competition in which Rogue has brought back, you know, around 18 or so legendary crossfitters from years gone by, some of which are, you know, really may not even be uh, household names for newer CrossFit athletes. Athletes like Annie Sakamoto, for example, one of the original Nasty Girls, Kristen Clever. You know, everyone knows Sam Briggs. Sam Briggs just this year is still qualifying for the CrossFit Games and she's won the games in 2013. On the men's side, we've seen my personal hero, Miko Salo, you know, 2009 CrossFit Games champion. We haven't seen him compete on the floor in five or six years at this point. On top of that, a Rich Froning stepped out to compete with uh, you know Dan Bailey and Tommy Hackenbrook and Chris Spieler and Jason Kalipa and Graham Holmberg. It was just a who's who of legendary CrossFit Games athletes. And just being able to see Julie Fouché or Tanya Wagner or Christy Phillips back onto the competitive floor, that means something. I mean, these were athletes that really held the sort of heart of the competitive CrossFit community intact over the past 10 or 11 years, maybe sometimes even longer in some cases. So what we're really seeing here is a chance that Rogue took to not just you know pay homage to these athletes, give them some more time in the limelight, let the athletes you know do what they're known for doing. You know we got to see Josh Everett split snatch during the Amanda event. I mean that is pretty wild, honestly. And on top of that, it breaks up the schedule of the day so that the individual athletes and the teams can get a little bit more time in between their events. And Rogue actually used a second version of this, the record breakers, which is something that they've done at the Arnold Strongman Classic uh, in the past, and they've just kind of you know bring in ringers whether they're competing at the uh, the event there at that moment or if they're just you know coming in specifically for the record breakers in order for them to try out and set new strongman world records. So all that general stuff aside, we did see some very cool performances out of some specific athletes, and I wanted to very quickly highlight a handful of sort of individual performances and races that we're going to be checking out going into day two at the Rogue Invitational. And the first thing that comes to mind is the tip top of the men's division and the tip top of the women's division, both of which are separated by a very small margin of points, both of which are household names. We have Patrick Vellner in the lead on the men's side, followed very closely by Matt Fraser. And on the women's side, Tia Claire Toomey in the lead, followed very closely by Sarah Sigmund's daughter. And really what we want to see here is a race between Matt Fraser and Patrick Vellner. Now, I interviewed Pat Vellner months and months and months and months ago. I mean, it feels like it was six years ago. It was probably like three months ago. But either way, one of the things that he was really adamant about was we've never seen Matt Fraser on his heels you know, back against the wall when it comes to the final day of competition at the CrossFit Games. And one of the biggest goals that Vellner had set for himself coming into this year's season is at the Games, he wants to have within striking distance, just so he could see Matt sweat a little bit, just so he could put a little bit of pressure on Matt Fraser and see what he does when they're 
is a lot more riding on the line and competition is much, much closer to him than before. And this is the exact scenario that I imagine he was sort of picturing in his mind. We're at the Rogue Invitational. The stakes are not particularly high for either of them. Yes, there's a lot of money on the line. And yes, competitively, there's a lot on the line. But in terms of the actual CrossFit Games, they've both locked in their spots. They don't have to really worry about it. This is truly an exercise in just competitive grit. And therefore, I think seeing Matt Fraser really kind of have his back against the wall, I mean, at this point we're calling like a 10 point or a 12 point difference back against the wall, but honestly, I will take whatever I can get. This man has been too dominant, and it's time that we kind of saw what happens with four events remaining on the final day of a competition, and he is not in the lead. On the women's side, Tia Claire Toomey, Sarah Sigmund's daughter, they're separated by about 20 points, just over 20 points, and there's four events remaining. Now, Sarah Sigmund's daughter has come to Columbus with more than just a great tan. She is looking like a monster. I mean, when we first saw her come onto the scene, it, the potential for a future CrossFit Games champion was clearly there, and I think she's just lacked the perfect season. You know, she hasn't really been able to put it together. Last year she looked pretty beastly, except she kind of had this major injury on her ribs and that makes a really big difference when it comes to, you know, being able to finish a competition. So now that she's healthy, she's fit, she's back and she's better than ever, it's important that we see her truly step up to the plate and crush competitions like this. And it's exciting to see that she's actually doing really well compared to a field that is really stacked. I mean, she's ahead of the other daughters. She's ahead of Annie Thor's daughter and Katrin Davis, our two previous two-time champions. She's just behind Tia Claire Toomey, who is honestly, not to downplay what she's doing, she is putting on a clinic. I mean, after that first event, Rory interviewed her and she basically said it was a walk in the park and it was an easy start to the day. So, there's always that. But either way, the, the importance here is that Sarah Sigmund's daughter is looking and performing at a very high level. This is a perfect time of the season for her to be here. I imagine uh, that she's going to be even more finely tuned machine when it comes to the CrossFit Games, and that is a competition that I'm really excited to see sort of Sarah 2.0 you know, make a debut at. On the men's side, I also strongly suggest you keep your eyes on Chandler Smith. And no, he is not some long lost Smith brother. Chandler Smith uh, sort of came out of nowhere a few years ago at regionals. He just barely missed qualifying uh, out of the Atlantic region. And he was a fan favorite right from the get-go. He's honest, he's open, he's really, really talented at fitness. Uh, I think the workout where he really made a splash had 405 pound deadlifts in it that he was just kind of throwing around uh, for no problem. And his GHD sit-ups are incredibly quick as well. But either way, Chandler Smith made it super clear that one of his big goals was to make it to the CrossFit Games by 2022. He competed at regionals, he barely missed it. It kind of changed the, uh, I don't know, I'd say the roadmap of his competitive CrossFit career, but he's in the military and that takes precedence for him. So this former wrestler in the military, he is you know, obviously putting his priorities first, but he's kept himself incredibly fit. He had an opportunity to come out to Rogue to compete, and here he is, not just eking his way out among a field of pre-qualified games athletes. I mean, you could probably take 12th and still qualify for the games, get an invite for the CrossFit Games out of the Rogue Invitational because of how many individual athletes are already there. He's neck and neck with some of the best CrossFit Games athletes in the sport. I mean, he's really not that far, only a couple spots behind Matt Fraser. And that is saying something. When you have a guy in Chandler Smith who has yet to prove himself on the biggest stage, kind of proving himself on the next best thing. Lastly, huge shout out to Caitlin Mead. Now, this is an interesting story, CrossFit Balance, one of their members uh, broke a finger and had like a laceration on her hand after the first event, so she had to kick out of the competition, and they kind of just pulled Caitlin Mead from the crowd. Now, she's 
a member of that gym. I think she's, you know, probably obviously knows them to some extent, but she's not like a games athlete. She's not going to be competing in Madison, an individual or a team, uh, a, a, you know, division either way. However, she clearly became a huge favorite for all the spectators, specifically at the tail end of the Team Chipper event, where it was a kind of you go, I go, heavy snatches situation, and the weight was just about at or slightly below or slightly above her existing PR, and she took a couple attempts at it, missed it, and finally made it with thousands of cheering fans. And then on top of that, by the way, she just hit it a few more times before the time cap ended. So congratulations to Caitlin Mead for really stepping it up and, and you know putting herself out there in a way that I think a lot of people probably wouldn't have and uh, reaping the rewards of that, which is getting to snatch heavy weights in front of thousands and thousands of people. I mean, there are Olympians who have never done that. So way to go, that's awesome. Remember folks, there's a whole lot going on in our sport and it's easy to miss some of the most interesting and exciting stories. That is what I am here for. There are three, count them, three sanctionals going on this weekend with superstars competing at every single one of them. I mean, if you just pluck Rogue out of the mix, you still have the Down Under CrossFit Championship that has Jacob Hepner competing against a home crowd of Australians who just are out for blood. They're like, you are not gonna be able to come into our house and try and beat us. And they're really putting up a great competition against them. And in Brazil, we see the cowboy Sean Sweeney being the cowboy Sean Sweeney, but with Brazilians and in Portuguese. And we are watching Will Morad, uh, Saxon Panchik, Spencer Panchik kind of fight it out for one of those invitation spots to the CrossFit Games. It's very exciting stuff. There's a lot going on. I'm, I'm gonna do uh, sort of general recaps on those after all of that is said and done over the course of next week. There's a lot to talk about. I mean, Hunter got the blowhard invite to the CrossFit Games. I mean, Greg Glassman just said it and that is pretty much how that works. So. Uh, there's that that we have to talk about. Anyway, there is a lot going on. It is easy to miss things. That is what I am here for, and I appreciate your support. If you like this stuff, please share it, subscribe, tell your friends about it. You know what? I'm not even gonna say please. Just do it. Just share. Just subscribe. Just tell your friends about it. How hard could that be? Let's keep this thing going, folks. I'll see you guys next time.